Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk all about, well, start to talk about this Yavi bead, how to make, a, uh, how to mount them on the fly, how to uh, tie the fly and uh, how to do it properly. Uh, it's going to be this fly, and I'm, I'm going to show you close up later, but let's go first about everything. So first of all it's going to be hook jig hook I prefer jig hook because uh, this little band over here is going to fit into this slot here so when it fits what happens is like this it doesn't rotate around the hook it can wiggle a little bit but it's going to to disappear once we introduce the first tying thread it's going to be uh, 70 denier it's flat so I'm just going to make a foundation like this and this foundation is actually going to increase the diameter of the hook uh, it will increase the friction between the hook and the bead and once I seal everything with super glue uh, it's going to be almost indestructible and that's very important when you fish a heavy fly like this so after that after I mount this bead on the hook it's important to secure all the materials over there so I'm going to use a little bit thicker thread because I want to cinch down all the materials onto it uh, I will for the tail I will use Coq de Leon beautiful barbs for the wire I'm going to use UTC wire in 10 it's small and for the dubbing it's squirrel dubbing mix that I already made a video about it's squirrel some UV purple and some CDC inside so that's all about it not much uh, obviously I'm gonna show you now you can make anything you want with this but I'm just going to show you a couple of techniques so it's again uh, thread control that you need for some parts of the fly uh, how to, to create this nice taper to it because it's not easy uh, to mount everything here when you have this abrupt taper and slippery surface it's going to slide down so I'm gonna show you how to prevent that then instead of black thread you can use orange or pink or whatever thread you want to create a hotspot over here that would be a nice touch you can make a CDC collar or whatever you want but I wanted to keep it simple because when you fish down the down deep in some deep pools where fish are not so scary spooky and picky you don't need much to catch a lot of fish so without any further ado let's get into tying so as I was saying this is the hook size 12 and this is Yavi bead 3.5 millimeters size uh, it's the, the width at the top of the, of the head here so how I choose the size it's let me start to show you now I try to align the tip of the Yavi bead with the hook eye and then I need to leave some room on the bare hook over here because this is going to be uh, well it's a base for everything that, that comes I'm gonna uh, create a taper over here on this part here and I'm going to slide the, the thread onto it so I can create um, as smooth as and as even taper as I can up until those ribs here so how I do that I mean this fly is not something you're going to use very often that's that's quite obvious so I start with uh, I go with my thread under the hook and then go around and I finish towards me so this is going to be reverse jump hitch and I start as far as I can but still not going too much into the band maybe a little bit couple of wraps so when you release this tag it doesn't unravel and then I'll just slide this wrap this uh, tag towards the hook eye one two and then I'll just go back and this is like extremely well secured right now now with flat thread you go towards the hook eye. Uh, flat thread is very important because it prevents bulk. Uh, it uh, makes the super glue adhere much better than metal on metal. 
I don't think that uh, bond is super good. It's just more friction. I mean, you will see what I'm going to do next, so it's not that important. But look at this. I'm going to put the bead like here and push it a little bit and see. Okay, so when I'm satisfied with the position, this is it. Now, one more reason I'm using the jig hook here is because the bend of the hook is going to prevent this, let's call it bead, from sliding around. As you can see here, this bend is going around the jig hook. So it's like uh, grabbing it, uh, enveloping it. It's like envelope around it. Yeah. So I'm just gonna do some super glue for a second here. So my bottle is used, so there is super glue all over. This super glue here is just for let's say fix things into the position prior to wrapping everything here. So I'll explain as I get there why is this very important. So as you can see everything is aligned. Now at this point you actually want to slide the thread down the bead, Yavi bead, and go into the hook. And here, well, uh, not always is possible to do the flat thread, it's kind of boring to spin the bobbin too much, but actually it helps create uh, this taper more even and nice. Uh, the more abrupt taper you have, the more likely is that thread is going to slide down the taper, and you don't want that. I'll go a little bit onto the bead now. Now. When you come to this point here, where the where the bead ends, if you push or push hard with your thread, you can actually slide the bead towards the hook eye, and well reposition the bead. Sometimes you may want it, but sometimes you may not want that. So that's why I put super glue here. Now with not much tension, just go around, and now I'll go back because I saw this thread sliding a little bit. Now I'm gonna flatten the thread. At this point it is important to do that, to create as little bulk as possible over the bead and just cover it. The thread, once varnished, is going to create more, uh, more friction or grip for the materials to come. At this point I'm just going to finish the fly, well the beginning of the fly obviously, and I'm gonna apply super glue it. Well, keep the eye above the super glue level. You'll see in a second what I'm talking about. I'll just soak it. Okay, this is it. Now I'll just keep it like this. And as you can see, I prepared some over here. I mean, those with black thread, they look already like a finished fly. I mean, some crazy perdigon nymph. Now I'm going to take one that was previously tied and it's dry already and I'm going to put this one over the over the foam. The reason why I said to keep your eye uh, uh, like this upwards is because of the super glue. If you don't do that, uh, this is going to happen. You'll close the eye. So instead of piercing it on the water, like it's easier to do it right now. Now I'm gonna change the thread for a little bit stronger one. This one is 8 through 0, Vivas. I'll start everything here, here, who cares, I'm gonna start it here. I already have a thread base. And attach your materials as you go down, here preferably. So, uh, for the tail, you can add tail, you don't have to look at tail. I'll just add uh, some of the coctelion here because it's very near me, it's like next to me. But you can use rooster barbs or pheasant tail barbs or whatever. As you can see, this is the length, not too long. So I'm gonna one, two, this is it, cut it now. It's time to get, get some wire. 
For this purpose, I'm going to use uh, ultra wire in 10 because this is the thickest one I have currently and I like the color. So thick wire is here to reinforce your flight. That's very important because this is going to bounce along the bottom and the rocks are going to destroy your flight pretty fast. Uh, sometimes faster than Trout's teeth are going to do that. So I'm gonna just go and secure the wire. So this is not going to be a pretty one, but again, flat thread is very useful. So, and, oops, I just touched the hook point. And this is it. Now comes the easy or difficult part, depends on how you did everything here. Uh, adding dubbing. For dubbing, add just enough to cover the body. Uh, or you can use thread, of course. Uh, using thread and varnishing it will make a very crazy fat perding on them that sinks faster than a rock. But I like to add some movement to everything here, so I'm adding dubbing. Uh, I mean, this fly is far from pretty fly, but it's extremely, extremely functional. It catches fish so well. Uh, one of my videos where I was uh, using um, dry fly rod for nymphing, 3 in 1 nymphing or something like that, uh, it's in my Euro nymphing uh, playlist. You can find it there. I was using this fly when I was catching like fish after fish in a deep pool. So I would use Euro nymphing technique, cast away from me, and let it sink. And then just strip it slowly because the upper current is keeping the tension because it's moving slowly but down the water is not moving so the fish are very lazy so you need to move your move your fly and cover the 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 water so just keep the tension that's why it's important to have the strong thread here now keep the tension add some little bit more here keep everything as uh, sparse if I can say that as possible I mean this is thick fly already so you don't want to add too much dubbing but again you need to add a little bit because the dubbing as well is going to be a cushion around your thread is going to prevent thread from uh, fraying when it bounces along the bottom as well so uh, dubbing and wire are actually reinforcing your fly in this moment so this can be like a cased caddis, so you can add some green, fluo green attachment over here. This is just to show you how to deal with these flies. I'm gonna make more of these in the future. So, this is it. And, yep, one more here. So as you can see, you can see my thread that I started to fly over here. So, I'm just gonna rip the fly. And I'm gonna do it counter wrap. So after each wrap, I'm gonna try to tighten up everything even more. Okay. I'm gonna cover the wire. Okay. I broke the wire intentionally. I'm gonna pull those hairs. Sorry for this, I need to grease it. And then, when we finish, try to not make, to, not to make it too wide. So one here and one on the top of it and then I'll soak it with super glue to reinforce it as much as I can as I'm saying this is not a delicate fly this is a very crazy looking fly that will catch a ridiculous amount of fish if you are using it at the proper time in order not to soak everything with super glue I'm gonna use my botkin and just touch the whip finish 
a little bit this part on the bottom is the exposed one you can do hot spot so you can use orange thread obviously uh, I mean just use your imagination and do this but uh, when you're fishing bottom uh, it's not so important that your fly is super accurate delicate or whatever fish down there are much less suspicious than the fish are in the mid column of the water or near the surface fish in deep pools along the bottom near the cover near their home are less likely to be spooked by flies so they will actually take more or less anything that you cast to them it's important that your fly gets to them uh, so that that's why I'm using this fly like this I mean you can obviously say that this tail here is not important at all and uh, I mean all those details that I'm making are because of me because of myself here uh, not because of the fish you can do whatever literally whatever you want here the most important part is the weight how you position it how you secure it you want more durable fly sometimes when you cast around the rocks you're gonna hit this fly or on, on the rock so you don't wa want your fly falling apart before you catch some fish on it yeah and that's why I'm trying to make and reinforce everything here now after this is dried I'll use some velcro and just brush it a little bit so I'll try to not to touch the wet finish just give it a little bit of that nice buggy look that we all like I guess so guys that would be it that would be my buggy heavyweight nymph uh, tell me what you think about it and see you next week